One Piece chapter 1000 set the stage for the Supernova versus the Yonko, the passing of the torch, the new generation taking the next step. So in this video, I want to discuss that new generation, specifically the worst generation, including Blackbeard and what they will accomplish in Wano and beyond. Because I do believe Wano is like the place that they're really going to take their next step. It's been a lot of foreshadowing about this is the stage where the Supernova and Luffy and Kid and the new generation in general is going to really take that next step. They are going against two Yonko right now now. Also, Marco in particular has shown a lot of confidence in the new generation winning this war. So let's just start with what's relevant right now with the Wano War. Currently, there's five Supernova up against two Yonko. We got Luffy, Kid, Law, Killer, and Zoro. I want to start off with Luffy because he's the MC. He's going to do the most. We already kind of knew that. I think in 1000 in particular, there was not only Luffy really like starting the war and punching Kaido and showcasing what he's really capable of, really showing that like he's the one in charge. But on top of that, all those connections with like Ace and like the faded 20 year of like defeat of Kaido and Luffy being the one to really like carry on Ace's will. I think last chapter hammered home the fact that Luffy was will be the one to really do the most damage to Kaido. I think most people already knew that because that is the pattern of the story. Luffy always takes down the big bad. But in Wano in particular, with so many different characters and so many different foreshadowings, it's been a pretty hot debate of who's actually going to take down slash kill Kaido. We'll talk about Zoro and Kid in a little bit, but with Luffy, I've always believed that he's going to do the most damage to Kaido. But with what we saw in the last chapter, I feel like Luffy will be the one to defeat Kaido. Now, that doesn't mean he has to kill him because Luffy doesn't really kill too much and it also doesn't mean that he's gonna like solo Kaido or anything but I think at the end of the day when it comes down to it after all the other people are like semi exhausted or occupied with other stuff Luffy's really gonna be the one to fully step up and go one on one with Kaido and really defeat him it'll be very similar to the fights that Luffy has had post time skip against Doflamingo he teams up with Law both of them do a lot of damage before Luffy takes out the big bad Whole Cake Island we saw that as well Nami helps him with Cracker and then again against Katakuri, he had a lot of help as well. Now against Tuyanko, he's obviously gonna need a lot of help. Currently, he has four other people to help him. I expect them to do a lot of damage, but at the end of the day, it's gonna be Luffy to really defeat Kaido. And yes, I do think Kaido is going down in Wano. There's been a lot of speculation about the raid failing, but even like Morge's opinion on this, I'm pretty sure he thinks that Kaido is still going down in Wano. I don't think he ever thought that Wano would just end in a complete failure and Big Mom and Kaido would be able to leave Wano on Unscathed. And I still do think his theory is probable. You know, the Wano tragedy still has to happen. So there could be a setback first, but eventually Kaido has to go down. The culmination of Wano and all these tragedies that's been building up since Zo, all of it is really coming together right now in the Wano arc. And for Kaido not to go down here, I don't really know how you would go about it after that. Big Mom is a whole nother story that I'll save for another video, but Kaido, I think will be defeated and Luffy is going to be the one to do it. But beyond Luffy, the other hot topic is Zoro versus versus Kaido, in particular Zoro killing Kaido. Now I've brought up this topic in many videos before and my stance still kind of stays the same. I think right now it's very obvious that Zoro will be fighting Kaido and Big Mom, but his main matchup and his main shine in the fight will likely come against Kaido and opening up his old wound. Not only has Zoro said himself a lot that he wants to take down Kaido and he's here to like slay Kaido, but there's also a bunch of foreshadowings about Kaido saying there's no samurai as great as Odin, nobody else can open this wound, so it's a very easy easy connection to make that Zoro will be the one to open up that wound again. My guy Randy Choi has a great speculation that Zoro, because he has Santoryu, will add a third wound to that wound mark. It would be very iconic and I've always believed that Zoro will get a big shining moment in Wano as a swordsman. That way he could kind of gain the respect of the samurai, this very strong nation of swordsmen. And if they start comparing him to the likes of Odin or Ryuma, his clout is going to go through the roof. Just exactly what he needs before he starts fighting people like Shiryu and Mihawk. But yeah, in this fight against Kaido, I think Zoro will be the one to open up his wound, and hopefully he showcases his full strength and what he's really capable of. Maybe we get some Mihawk flashbacks and like what he did. The only time we got a little bit of that was in his fight against Pika, where he kind of flashed back to Mihawk training him on armament hockey, and now he's had much training with Emma and focused more on his armament hockey. I expect that he's advanced another level. On top of that, there's a lot that Zoro has not showcased it. What about Ashra, his strongest attack? I think there's a lot 
more for Zoro to showcase and hopefully by the end of this fight we'll get a clear idea of how strong Zoro is because there's been a lot of toxic conversations about how strong Zoro actually is and it's been very debatable because Oda has just not given Zoro a lot of fights post time skip so it's been a lot of speculation and guessing based off of his character so hopefully after this fight we'll get a clear idea of how strong Zoro is and Zoro gets a lot of badass moments and for my final thoughts on Zoro killing Kaido I have always thought that it's still possible and though I always believed that Luffy was gonna do the most damage to Kaido I thought there was a chance that Zoro might come in and have the killing blow but after last chapter I really felt like Luffy had the will of defeating Kaido so at the very least he was going to defeat Kaido so if that were the scenario Zoro coming in and killing an exhausted Kaido really isn't the badass moment that even Zoro fans are hoping for so I feel like it's become less likely that he does but it is still possible maybe Luffy defeats him and then he gets exhausted and then Kaido gets like a second win somehow or like Big Mom is still alive and nobody defeated her so like she starts controlling him or something and then Zoro comes through and slices his head off almost like a Kuma arriving at Thriller Bark type of situation in this case Big Mom would be Kuma and like maybe she controls Kaido but this time around Zoro is actually has some extra energy and takes out Kaido that could be a way to do it but overall I feel like it's less likely but still possible but next let's talk about a person who I actually don't think is gonna get a ton of shine in this battle despite being a main supernova and that character is Law and Law I feel like got a lot of shine already in Dressrosa and although he does have a storyline in Wano now with like the Willa D and the Poneglyphs I think in this fight right now against Big Mom and Kaido he's gonna be in that support role which really fits him anyways and in a way he'll get his own shine being able to use the other four strong people and like switch them around with room and really showcase his coordination and understanding of the fight like the coordination he had with Luffy back in Dressrosa now he has three other strong people to do it with I think it could be a really really fun battle especially when it comes out in the anime on top of that I do think Law has more to showcase with his strength I feel like after his fight against Doflamingo he might have grown stronger it would make sense as well that fight really challenged him and pushed him to the brink in Wano so far he did defeat Hawkins and he's been making like rooms pretty effortlessly without even saying room so if we're gonna give credit to Zoro for not saying Shishi Sun Sun we gotta give credit to Law for not having to say room anymore to use massive massive rooms like Luffy Kid and Killer spent so long going up the stairs and Law just made a room and popped himself up there so I do think Law has more to showcase he will be in more of a support role maybe he's able to showcase some new attacks or an upgraded version of Radio Knife to damage Kaido internally I'm not expecting that but it would be cool to see the other thing with Law you have to talk about is his operation the immortality operation a lot of people have speculated that this does happen in Wano and he saves Luffy that way and sacrifices himself and I made a video on this previously but I really don't think he's gonna use it on Luffy here in Wano he just hasn't had that big of a setup in Wano I feel like there hasn't been enough setup for him to do that and if it were gonna happen it would be the tragedy of act three which should be coming to an end soon and I think Law dying with the operation in the next few chapters just isn't likely I think it's possible he does use that operation in the future just not in the Wano war right now but speaking of tragedies I actually want to talk about killer next because it's kind of interesting that he's up there right now because the other four people are absolute monsters and we already know that but killer you know he doesn't quite stack up he is there because he's with kid but like if he doesn't have another purpose in this fight why did Oda send him to the top of the dome do we think he's actually strong enough to really damage Kaido or Big Mom I think the other four could figure out a way to do that but killer I don't think you have the facilities for that so what other reason is there to have killer up there well maybe he's the tragedy of act three this does kind of come out from left field but think about like the candidates for the tragedy it's not really going to be Kinemon he's still alive we saw that and he got sent away to safety law just got up to the top of the dome we've barely seen him it doesn't really make sense for all of a sudden him dying there is the possibility of the raid failing and the big mom and Kaido just wiping the floor with a supernova but I do think that's become less likely and the one I really like which is also ironically a Morge theory too and that is killer dying now Morge made this theory like a long time ago before we found out killer was Kamazo and all that but him dying here in this fight just might be his role because if he can't do any damage 
damage, there's nothing else he could really do. Like at least Law, even if he can't hurt Big Mom and Kaido, he could teleport people around and bounce people around and like coordinate attacks. Killer, he doesn't have a devil fruit. He hasn't really showcased that much in terms of hockey or physical attacks. So maybe he really can't do anything and is crushed by the hands of Big Mom or Kaido. That would fit as the climax of Act 3. It would be the tragedy of Wano and it would really not only like be a big moment, but also shift Kid's character as well. If Killer doesn't die up here, I guess he could be used as a pawn in some attacks, but it would really negate him to a very minor character. So I actually think it's very likely that Killer may be the tragedy of Act 3. And if that happens, what Kid does in Wano completely changes. First off, use this Kid needs a lot of shine. This man has been a character of high portrayal with nothing to back it up. Always been next to Luffy and Law who showcased a lot. He's been portrayed as a rival to Luffy all the time, but so far we haven't seen them do anything. Even with his like powers, all we've seen is him collecting a bunch of metal and making gigantic metal arms like he's a 10 year old kid. I'm sure he has more to his powers, his unnamed devil fruit, we don't even know what it is yet. So hopefully he could showcase more of his powers in this fight and what he's really capable of. He's another person that has conquerors hockey as well and very high ambition. So we do expect big things from Kid, he just hasn't done anything yet. And in this fight right now, he actually has like a lot of motivations. He was betrayed by a poo killer got messed up. Like he has a lot of reason to fight Kaido and defeat him. So I think in this fight right now, at the very least, he should be able to deal some damage to Kaido to kind of prove his strength. Hopefully we can see some more of his powers as well. There's a lot of talk about him having like a magnetic fruit and able to like do some Magneto type stuff, levitation, like being able to mess with people's brains and stuff like that. Maybe he has to awaken to do that, but hey, maybe he does it in this battle. And also that giant ass sword, if he's able to pull that thing out of the ground and attack Kaido and Big Mom with it, or maybe like split the skull in half, that would be a major feat for Kid. The Kid slander would definitely end there. And if Killer dies, that really takes him to another level with even more motivation. And it will probably lead to a Kid backstory and really take us to the next part of his story, which I actually think won't come in Wano. And instead it will come in the next arc or like a next couple of arcs when Luffy finally meets Shanks and like that storyline, because we do know that he lost an arm to Shanks. And when he formed that alliance with Apu and Hawkins, they wanted to go after Shanks. So that story there, connecting it all together, I feel like that's when we'll figure out all of Kid's motivations and what type of character he is. But yeah, for Kid, I think in this battle, he has to be able to showcase some of his powers. Maybe we'll get a little bit of backstory. And the big thing for him, he should be able to do at least some damage to Kaido. And I also think it's quite possible he's the one that fights Big Mom a lot because they do have a history as well. He did steal something from her territory and injure one of her sweet commanders. So there is some beef there. And also somebody else has to take on the challenge that is Big Mom and Kid might be the perfect candidate. But moving on to another supernova, somebody who has a lot of connections with Kid and that is Apu. Now Apu is interesting because I really don't know what his character represents. Is it just the reality of the new world where even if you're a big shot, very strong like rookie against somebody like the Yonko, you're gonna have to give in? Because remember in Sabote, Apu had a lot of balls. Like he went straight after Kazaru when he could have just booked it. But now it feels like he's learned like how strong the Yonko are and he gave in to Kaido and betrayed other Supernova members. But how exactly is this story going to end is very interesting to me. I don't think it's gonna be a good ending for him. I think Apu is gonna be the only person within the Supernova that really has no redemption path. I think his story will likely just be that sad story of like a new rookie, a hotshot, arrogant, strong rookie, really getting the reality of the new world and how strong the Yonko are. But at the same time, when he's defeated, maybe by X Drake and Kaido is defeated, he's kind of like given the perspective of like, oh, you shouldn't give up your loyalty so easily and like succumb to like the power because people of his generation will be the ones to take down the person that he looked up to and cowered to. So I think in Wano right now, he likely loses to X Drake and sees Kaido's defeat and has to kind of like readjust his mindset or something like that. And then after that, I really don't think we need to see much more of a poo. I'm not really that interested in his backstory. There's not a lot of setup there either. So he could either dip it and like quit as a pirate or maybe Kid is so pissed that Killer died and goes and kills a poo. That would be a pretty dramatic ending, but it also feels like something Oda wouldn't do. But for a poo in general, I really don't think he's gonna accomplish much more because he gave in to the Yonko. At the same time, there's another person who gave in to a Yonko and that is Hawkins. But Hawkins on the other hand, isn't in the same boat as a poo because at least he didn't betray the other people. I've always said this about Hawkins, but he's a tarot card simp. Whatever the odds are, he's gonna follow that. He's an incredibly unpredictable person 
Hawkinson. We don't even know where he is right now in this crazy war. I've always joked about like Hawkins, this is probably your best chance to just book it out of here. But he clearly has a role in this war and he's been analyzing a lot of things, kind of looking at people's percentages of death and like how likely they are to win. So I'm guessing he's kind of just monitoring the situation and I feel like he will have a moment where he goes to the other side later in the war and it could either be him being shocked that the Straw Hats have gone against the odds or a moment of development for him where he, despite the odds being lower, goes against the odds and fights for Luffy and Zoro and the Straw Hats. I also feel like Hawkins is a person we do need to explore more backstory on. What exactly is this man's mission? Why is he a pirate? He's somebody that like only follows the odds. So like, did he have another mission and like look at the odds and figure out like, oh, becoming a pirate is the best way for me to accomplish that. I don't think he has like a deep role, like he's sword or like the world government or a revolutionary or something crazy like that. I'm just a little curious of like what his actual mission in life is. Will we get that? I hope so, but I'm not holding on hope for it. Post Wano, I really don't know where Hawkins could come back into the story either, but I do think in Wano, he will have a big moment where he switches sides. But finally, the last person that we know is in Wano right now is X Drake. And X Drake, as we know, he's actually a sword member. He's actually a Marine and he has some sort of hidden agenda as well. I think in Wano, he's not really gonna do much else besides probably fight and defeat Apu. It does look like that fight's gonna happen despite the fact that I really want the Apu versus Brook fight. But this will be a good matchup as well. I think X Drake will win that. But after the war, what he does will be very interesting. We don't really know what his actual goal is as a sword member infiltrating Kaido's crew. Was it really just to keep tabs on Kaido and what he's doing? I think it's deeper than that because when his cover was semi blown of like him being a traitor by Queen and who's who, he didn't straight up just give up his cover. He said, there's more I need to do. So maybe he's after the opponent glyphs or something, but he definitely has another mission that he has to complete. And to be honest with you guys right now, I don't really have a good guess exactly what that is. So for the Wano War right now, I just think his main thing will be defeating Apu. And then afterwards, I don't think anybody's really gonna bother him. Like Luffy is not gonna care, but he will probably go off on his own and start his next mission or something like that. But those are all the members of the worst generation that are in Wano right now. So now let's talk about the other three, starting with Blackbeard. Now Blackbeard, he's the most accomplished man out of the entire worst generation, even more so than Luffy. What he did at Marine Ford really proved that despite him being part of the worst generation, he was ready. He killed Whitebeard, stole his fruit, gathered this crazy strong crew, and then during the time skip, he already became a Yonko. Now Blackbeard right now is on the move to do something. There's a lot of different theories on this. Maybe it's an ancient weapon. I made a theory before of him potentially going after Doflamingo. This is the idea that he might be going after Whole Cake Island and going after the Poneglyph in Big Mom's territory. But the man is definitely on the move right now. I do think his fight with Luffy and the Straw Hats is coming up soon. Oda did just recently reveal that Shanks is gonna be on the move soon. And with how closely connected Shanks and Blackbeard are, I think that arc is gonna come together. And I always thought that Blackbeard is Luffy's rival to finding the One Piece. So I think before Luffy and the Straw Hats find One Piece, Blackbeard and the Blackbeard Pirates are gonna be their main enemy. Now, as far as them coming over to Wano, I don't think it's gonna happen right now. There is the Moria connection, him having three souls and getting a third Zoan fruit. So him getting Kaido's fish fruit could be what he's after. But I do think he's on the move to get something else right now because when he's talking about boys pack it up, we gotta go, he's talking about like the Marines not taking advantage and taking what he wanted. So I think he's definitely doing something else right now. Maybe we'll get an update soon between Act 3 and Act 4 or Act 4 and Act 5. But I think post Wano, he will be involved somehow. This is the Yonko saga. So unless him and Shanks both come to Wano, which I feel like would be pretty chaotic, but definitely not impossible. But unless that happens, I think there will be another arc after Wano with Shanks and Blackbeard involved and that will kind of cap off the Yonko saga. But as far as what Blackbeard will accomplish in this story, I think he's probably gonna get his hands on a few Poneglyphs and I think he's really gonna be head to head with Luffy like about to get the One Piece. I don't think he's gonna reach Laugh Tale. I feel like that's only something Luffy's going to accomplish. So that way only the Roger Pirates and the Straw Hat Pirates would be the only crews to ever accomplish that. But Blackbeard is no joke. This is a man that's been collecting power during the time skip. He's had a very long term plan for a very long time. So he's for sure gonna accomplish a lot but he will come up short and Luffy will defeat him before getting 
getting the One Piece in my personal opinion. But moving on, let's talk about another mysterious person that is Jewelry Bonnie. Now Bonnie, really you can't even consider her a pirate anymore. I made a video on the Sorbet Kingdom recently, check that out if you haven't seen it already. But essentially Bonnie definitely has another mission for becoming a pirate. There's a lot of different theories which I discussed in that video, but she could be Kuma's wife, Kuma's mom, but whatever her reason for becoming a pirate is, is not to actually just become a pirate. She got captured during the time skip by Kainu and she escaped by herself. She just left her crew behind and said peace out. And last we saw her, she was at Marijua at the Reverie trying to free Kuma likely. What actually happened there, we don't really know. Kuma might even be dead. I'll probably make a video on the Reverie soon, so we'll talk a little more about that later. But yeah, Bonnie, as far as what she's going to accomplish, it's not really going to be pirate related. With her, she really has a goal of like something against the world government, so she'll probably be involved in that final war. Besides that, I don't really think she's going to be that notorious for anything else. But on to another supernova that is very mysterious, and that is Rogue. Now, Rogue, we really have no idea what this man wants and what he is. We know he's from like a Sky Island, so maybe if like the Straw Hats explore Sky Islands later on, like he'll get involved somehow. He definitely has more story to him. He has a very unique design. I feel like Oda has a role for him for sure. But I really don't have much of a good guess right now. There's really not a lot of theory surrounding him as far as I know. If you guys have any, let me know in the comments. But Rogue is a person that could easily pop up in any future arcs, even in something like Elbath. He could just randomly show up because of something else. And now all of a sudden he's part of the story. I feel like it's only a matter of time before he gets involved in the story and plays a bigger role. Probably in the next arc and we should get a good amount of information on him because we just haven't seen him too much. But as far as what he'll accomplish, it does feel like he's just a pirate trying to have a good time and doing his own thing. So he might go down as one of the stronger pirates in the world. I don't think he has like a bigger mission of some sort, at least not right now. We just need to see more from this man. Now, finally, the last supernova we discussed before we go back to some of the other ones we mentioned. And it's a person we've actually seen a lot recently and that's Capone. Capone, of course, just had this long ass cover story that most people did not enjoy. But I do think it gave us a good hint at where his story goes next. Now, initially when his story ended, I brought up the question of like, is this the last that we saw of Capone? Because if you think about it, he really got everything he wanted. He escaped from Big Mom Pirates. He's got his family. They found Lola. She finally married somebody. Pound is there as well. They got one big happy family. So what more do they really need to do? How else could they come back to the story? Well, there is one storyline that is still very possible and that is Elbaf. One thing my guy Randy Choi brought up to me in our collaboration stream was that Lola and Shafan being together is a big deal because they're both friends of Nami. And with Lola, there is still that Elbaf connection where she previously rejected a marriage against Prince Loki. So maybe if Elbaf is the next arc and like something happens to the Straw Hats, now they have a motivation, Capone and Lola and Shafan, to go to Elbaf and help the Straw Hats. And with Lola having that Elbaf connection, she might be like, oh, I gotta speak some sense into that Loki. Nami and the Straw Hats are our friends. We gotta go help them. So that's definitely one way they could return to the story. And honestly, I can't think of any other way they return to the story. Unless it's like that final big war, everybody just shows up for no reason, which would be kind of weird. So I feel like for Capone Beige and the Fire Tank Pirates, if they were to return to the story somehow, it would be in Elbaf. But if they don't, they're one big happy family. I don't really think they do much else besides just sail the seas and be pirates. They'll still definitely be notorious, but not on like a huge level. But now that we've gone through all the worst generation members outside of Wano, let's go back to the people within Wano and what they will accomplish beyond Wano. Luffy, he's the MC. We know he's going to be the goat pirate, the pirate king. He's probably going to take down the world government as well. The freest man of all time, he's the goat. That's Luffy. Zoro, the world's greatest swordsman, perhaps even the goat swordsman. These are things that we already know are going to happen. Law, on the other hand, Law does have a new mission where he's now going after the Poneglyphs. I feel like he's definitely going to play a big role in taking down the world government and figuring out the true history. If he dies, I think it will be in that final war, but if he doesn't die, he's going to be known as one of the greatest pirates, a Will of D member, and probably a hero to some for defeating the world government. Also, I don't think Law is part of S.W.O.R.D. I'm sorry, Randy. You got a lot of good evidence. I just don't think there's enough to prove it. But moving on to another big name, and that is Kid, who has a lot of ambition. But I really don't think Kid is going to rival Luffy and what Luffy accomplishes, despite his portrayal. I don't think he's really going to be Luffy's white beard. If anything, he's more like Luffy's Shiki, somebody that is trying to challenge Luffy and has high ambitions, but it's not really quite his level. I think he will for sure go and make a big name for himself and be one of the most well-known pirates. It's just not going to be quite the level of Luffy or even somebody like Blackbeard. Killer, as I mentioned, I think might actually just die, but if he doesn't, he's just going to be sticking around with Kit. Apu, Hawkins, I really don't think either of them has much more in the story beyond Wano. 
Tech Strike, I actually think is going to be an admiral in the future. I feel like it makes perfect sense him being the new generation and him being part of Sword and him being closely connected with Kobe, who I feel like is going to be like the final fleet admiral. So X Drake, I think it would be fitting for him to be one of the future admirals. And I believe that is everybody. That should be everybody in the worst generation, what they will accomplish in Wano and beyond. But what about you guys? What did you think of my predictions? Do you have any guesses of your own? Let me know in the comments below. But as always, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy, please hit that like button. To keep up with this channel, you gotta hit that subscribe button. If you want to interact with your fellow crewmates, King Pirates Discord in the description below. Be sure to follow me on Twitter. I'm DKing4 and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.